Greetings gamers, I'm Anto and today we're going to be showing you how to make a ship in Dungeon Draft. I'm a huge fan of Dungeon Draft and I've made a couple of different videos on the program in the past, but one of the most requested tutorials people wanted to see was making a ship battle map. So that's what we're gonna be doing here today. So without any further ado, let's head over to the computer and get started. So here we are in Dungeon Draft and we're ready to get started. The first thing that we wanna do is we wanna fire up a new map and choose our page size. I'm gonna go with a 40 inch TV just to start with to get an idea of how large that's gonna be. I think that will probably do us. We might want it a little bit longer because we're gonna be making a reasonably large ship. So we'll bump that up to 45 tiles wide by maybe 30 tiles. That's more like it, plenty of room there. Now there's a couple of things that we need to do before we get started. We need to make sure we know a few things. A lot of this process, making a ship in Dungeon Draft, relies on the layer tool. We're gonna to be using different layers to add different elements and get them to interact in different ways for our final map. So you wanna be familiar with the layer tool in Dungeon Draft. And the other big thing that we need to know how to do is how to make curved walls, which is one of the things that trips a lot of people up when they get Dungeon Draft and they're trying to make new maps. So I'm gonna really quickly show you how to do that. We're gonna grab a wooden wall here. We're gonna zoom in. And the way to do it is we start off, choose our starting location, left click, which will start drawing our wall, and then hold down shift, which will change the color as you can see, and we can drag that around. And what that does is it creates a thing called a spline, which is a curved section, and we can change the degree to which it's curved. So if we want a little bit of a curved wall, we drag it out to there, let go of shift, double click, it will put our wall in. Now throughout the process, you'll see me use a lot of curved walls and it's kind of essential for making a ship map is being able to use curved walls. So make sure you're comfortable with that. Left click to start and then hold down shift and hold down click and drag around your spline. Then let go of shift, let go of your left mouse button and then double click to finish it. If you wanna connect to, you start it, hold down shift, drag where you wanna be, let go of both, it'll let you then move your cursor where you want the new one, go back to where you started, hold down shift, drag it out in exactly the same way, double click. And that's how we're gonna build the walls for this ship. Another thing we need to keep in mind is save often. Dungeon Draft is still in early access, and as such, it's not the most stable that it could be, and we will almost certainly run into crashes throughout this process, so we wanna save often, and make sure that we keep everything up to date. So we're ready to dive in, and the first thing I like to do is get my layers sorted. I wanna decide how many layers I want this map to be and get them all in place to begin with. So our bottom layer, the bottommost layer, is gonna be our water. And we're gonna have nothing on this except our water. Then the next layer up, we're gonna have our below deck, then our main deck, an upper deck, and the sails basically. So we've got three decks, the water, the sail, five total layers. So I want to make those layers right at the start. So we go over to the layers tool and we're just going to create a bunch of new layers over the ground here. So the first thing that we want to do after we've sorted our layers, head to the ground layer. So we're going to come down here, select the ground layer, and then we're going to go over to our water tool select the square option, change our color to the more blue tones, and then we're just gonna draw in a whole layer of water, and we don't wanna do anything else to this layer at this point. So we're gonna hit save, save early, saved often, and then we're gonna switch on up to the below deck. Now, I'm gonna leave below deck blank for now. I wanna work on the main deck first because that's gonna be the, the main part of the map that the players interact with. And that's gonna determine the size of our ship, which will inform how big our 
lower deck and our upper deck are. So we're gonna head up to the main deck layer, then we're gonna hit compare layers and choose our reference level. Now our reference level is the ground and we wanna turn the opacity all the way up on the reference level and all the way up on our comparing level, on our main deck level. This allows us to see the water without interacting with it. So again, just gonna make sure I'm saving really frequently because Dungeon Draft is still early access, so it is likely to crash. And we can get started making our ship. The first thing that we wanna do is we wanna get a basic shape, a basic outline. Now for this, I've gone and looked up some blueprints of other ships, of real world ships, just to get an idea of how they look. And I found this of the Rota Low, a 1597 vessel, and I like the shape of it, so that is what we're gonna use today. Or an approximation of it, at least. So you can see here, we've got a nice reasonably square back and then it tapers outwards and then inwards at the front. So if we look at our map here, we want maybe five squares at the back, 25 feet at the back. The best thing to do here is we can count our squares. So our bottom square is 30 squares. We wanna get up to 15 and go for the central five makes it a little bit awkward. Let's make it six squares at the back. So we're gonna grab our wall tool, select our wooden wall, find the number 15. Down at the bottom right here, you'll see the grid positions. Um, get into number 15 and then gonna go down six from there. Now I wanna spline this ever so slightly, only a little bit like that. And what I'm gonna do very first of all is I'm just gonna really roughly put the walls in. I'm not gonna connect them. I just wanna get a rough idea of the shape, test out the shape of the ship, make sure it's the right size. I know where I wanna place things, how I wanna curve my splines. Doing this means that I can go back and make a refined version later. So switching back to my reference, I can see then that we come out nice and wide up to the front and then we've got a little bit here. So I think up to about 34 is probably gonna be good. So get to 34 and then we wanna spline it. So we'll come out by three squares and I want my spline to be four squares away from the end point. So again, place that. Do the same on the other side. Hold for a spline, and we wanna come out by three squares and over by four squares. Double click that, and then we can make the front of the ship, the prow. Um, for that, I'm gonna choose my end point. Again, create a spline, and I'm gonna curve this one inwards by one square, and do that. And then again, I wanna come inwards by a single square. And then check the positioning, check the shape, see if we're happy with everything. So looking at the front here, I can see that the spine at the front is off center. That's not a problem. All we need to do is go in. And this is why I've put separate walls to start with, so that we can go in and we can make those adjustments. So I come in here and make sure that we wanna to go to number 15. So we wanna to go to there, and then again, a spline, we wanna curve it inwards, so we'll go from the point in two. Do the same from here, create our, create our spline like this, and then we curve inwards by two. And I'm pretty happy with the shape of that overall. I think we could go a bit bigger though. So I will remake this, but slightly larger. So we've got the outline of the ship. The next step is to add the floor. To do this, we go over to the floor shape tool. We're gonna select the polygon tool. We're gonna choose no wall as our option. And then we're gonna follow the exact same process, following around the shape that we've just made to fill in the floor of the main deck which gives us our deck. 
Now from here, we can go and start adding details. But the first thing that I want to do is figure out where our top deck is going to be. So to do that, I'm going to grab the wall tool again, grab the wooden wall, and we're just going to partition off part of this ship. So we're going to drag it back here and we're going to just drag off this section. This whole back section is going to be our upper floor. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the upper deck and we want to compare the upper deck with the main deck like so and we hit OK. Now I want the upper deck of this ship. If we look here, it looks like the upper deck is a little bit bigger, a little more grand than our rear deck, than our middle deck, our main deck. That's a lot of decks. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to just slightly increase the size. So we're going to go two out, two across, and make another layer for our deck. We're going to see how that looks. So that gives us our main, our upper deck at the rear that we can then work on. So we're going to abandon the upper deck for now and we're going to go back down to the main deck which is where most of our work is going to take place. So again, save to make sure that we're saving often and if we encounter a problem like I have now where we can't compare levels, just switch levels. And then we're going to compare it with the ground again just because I like being able to see the water. I think it makes it look nicer. So what we want to do now is we've got an idea of what our main deck looks like. We've put our upper deck. We want to go down to our below deck and we want to compare that with our main deck and we want to drop the reference opacity. So then we want to go in and add our lower level. Now I'm going to make that smaller than our main deck to represent that wasting of the middle of the ship. And once we've done that, we can go straight on to detailing. And with our lower deck done, it's time to work on the sails. Now I like to do this before I start adding detailing, just so that I can do all my detailing in one nice pass. So we're gonna jump up to the upper deck for a moment. We're gonna compare levels with the main deck so that we can see where our masts are. And the more I look at it, the more I don't like this floor. So we're going to grab this, hold down Alt. And we are just going to hold down Alt, actually Alt instead of Control. And we're just going to delete that deck. And instead, we're going to build a new one, just ever so slightly bigger. That's a little bit better. That's less exaggerated. But now we're on the upper deck, we've got the reference of our main deck, we can add our final sail, or our final mast at least. So we go into the object tool, we grab that slightly smaller mask, we make sure snapping is turned on with S, we line it up and we place it. So now on our ship we'll have two smaller sails, one at the front and one at the back, and then our big main sail. Um, adding the sails is what we're going to do next. So we're going to go up to the sails deck, Navigate up to the sails deck and we're going to compare that first with the main deck. We're going to drop the opacity of the main deck a little bit and then we're going to grab a sail. We're going to grab the biggest sail that we've got. That's still not big enough so we want to up the scale of that to two and then we're going to spin that around here. You can see that that's already got a mast so we don't actually need to add a mast of our own. We just want to make sure that everything is nice and square on and then we place our mast down and then we grab our smaller sail here and we're going to place that there like that or we will if it will place there like that and then turn off compare levels compare it to the upper deck and do the same thing but now with our sails then it's time to start detailing and this is one of the funnest parts of the whole process, at least for me. You get to go wild and add in all your little details. So we head over to the object tool, still with our ship option selected. You can see that we've got a whole bunch of different options. We've got hammocks, we've got anchors, we've got little wheels and port, like hatches sails, all that kind of thing. And then we can keep adding details. The first very first thing that I want to do is I want to add in some stairs up to that upper level. So I'm going to change my scale back down to one and I'm going to grab 
a couple of staircases. Spin them around here like this. And I'm going to place a few staircases going up to that upper level. And then as we are on the main deck, this rear portion can be the captain's quarters and cabin. So we'll grab the door tool and we'll select our doors and we'll zoom in here and place our doors for the captain's cabin. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go through this whole ship and make it look fancy and add all of the different options and I'll come back once I've added everything and we can talk about how you export this. While I'm working away on this I just want to give you a quick update. We passed 10,000 subscribers last week which is absolutely bonkers and I am so grateful for each and every one of you that has subscribed. There's a lot of exciting things coming including merch. I am wearing a piece of Icarus Games merch. If I just spin around here you can see it's got the logo on the back and on the front it's got this party of adventurers and it says the party that slays together stays together. This is one of the merch options that is now available. The link to that is in the description below so if you haven't checked that out already please do go and give it a look. And here we have a finished map. You can see that I've gone around and added a whole bunch of details. On the main deck here we've got some lifeboats, various cannons, a plank for someone to walk the plank some hatches to lower goods down into the cargo hold and then in this back section here we've got the captain's quarters we've got an office a little bath area um, a dining table for the captain to dine with some of his favored crew members and then the captain's bedroom up top here we've got the top deck with the wheel i don't know the technical term the wheel for the boat um, more weapons and more lifeboats and then if we go down below decks we've got where the crew would sleep and then that cargo hold that's filled with an assortment of items so when it comes time to export we've got a couple different options we can export each layer relative to other layers or we can export each layer individually and then use a third party program to stitch them all together so if we wanted to use the export function and keep some of the layers together, we hit export, we could choose the ground as our source level and the main deck as our overlay level. And you can see there that it will put the main deck over the water for us to export out. If we wanted to do it as level by level, we could choose the ground to be the main level and we would just export that at a high resolution. And then we export each of the other ones as a PNG at lower resolutions, which is what I'm going to do. So we're going to start off with the ground level. We're going to choose maybe 150 pixels. I don't want to go absolutely huge but 150 pixels is good so we will export that and we'll call that water and then that will export out it will show us our water and then we can use that to stitch together the rest of the map so we want to turn off show folder on finish and then we're going to go deck by deck choosing png and we're going to change the size to be roll 20 so we're just going to hit export and we're going to go below deck like that and then go up to the main deck export that as a png we're going to call that main deck and then we will finish off by grabbing the upper deck and exporting that upper deck and we will do the sales as well because why not so we'll export that as sales. The next thing we want to do is we want to jump into some sort of image editing software. You could use Photoshop for this, GIMP, Paint will work. I'm going to use Serif Page Plus because it's what I always use. So we'll load up Page Plus here and then bring all these images together. And after dragging our images in, you can see here that I've got our water layer at a much higher resolution. So I've increased the size of that and made it the background and then we're just going to go in and grab the individual layers and what I can do is I can rotate them around and we can have this breakdown view of the map so I can place the elements 
like this so that we could give this map, use this map for our players and have all three of the decks visible for play if we wanted to instead drag over the different decks on top of one another grab the sails rotate them and put them on top of one another as well and get a complete boat look or i can drop the transparency of the sails so that they still appear but we can see what's beneath them and use those in different ways this is why i like exporting the different levels as their own images so that I have more control in post. I'll run a complete image of this map across the screen now so you can get a good look at the final result but I am really pleased with this and hopefully this has given you a good indication of how you can use Dungeon Draft to make ship maps. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some inspiration for the kinds of maps that you can make in Dungeon Draft. I'd love to see some examples of the kinds of things that you've made down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as always, because it really helps tell our overlords at YouTube that this video is worth putting in front of other people. But until next time, happy gaming. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all my new releases. I release new videos every other Friday. You'll find more videos just over here. And if you enjoy what I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Just $5 a month gets you access to loads of extra content to use in your RPG campaigns. But until next time, happy gaming.